Hello, and welcome to my official Kerbal Space Program 1.0 stock series. This series will be in sandbox mode, which is a mode I haven't played in a very long time, but I do believe that KSP is fundamentally a sandbox game, so this is the one I wanted to do for 1.0. If you would like career mode pointers, I'll be live streaming hard difficulty career mode on Twitch, and you'll see edited versions of those streams on this channel. Also, there is the beta tutorial that I did for 0.90, most of which will have some application to the career mode in 1.0. This series will feature the final products of vehicle testing in KSP 1.0. So the testing process won't be fully documented, which is different from most of my other series where you get to see me flail about and cause chaos. However, once craft are cleared for mission duty, all mishaps will be included. I will also be doing post commentary exclusively so that I can make the episodes tighter than I normally do and can attempt more daring things than I would if I was trying to talk at the same time. The first mission is for Jeb Kerman to test the BGN, named after the infamous racing plane perhaps best known from the movie The Rocketeer. Jeb's goal is to demonstrate the BGN's viability as a personal transport craft to and from orbit. We'll talk more about it on the way up. Now when you've got a small craft like this and you're trying to build a single stage to orbit system, the logical thing to do is to have a single engine and that engine had better be a rapier because of course the jet engines aren't going to work in space and the rocket engines are inefficient in the atmosphere. So here we have the rapier and of course if you're building a personal transport craft for a Kerbal, you would expect that that craft should be able to get into space as quickly as possible and so what you see here is that the rapier is rocketing, or actually jetting, uh, Jebediah up in the BGN at a high pitch. So we're going to get to high altitude relatively quickly, not burning too much liquid fuel on that. The vision here is that Kerbals treat space as their workplace, and in that case the BGN is their personal car. Obviously it's not really meant for carpooling, but it does its job. When you think about it, it only takes a few minutes to get to orbit, and if you time it right, it shouldn't take more than an hour to reach a station in orbit. So it's really a reasonable commute. The main issue would be the cost of fuel, and we'll assume that the Kerbals get reimbursed for that from their work. By now you'll be wondering why I left an exposed docking port on this vehicle. And uh, that is a very good question. It is entirely a matter of mass. Uh, of course we have shielded docking ports and we have the inline docking ports that are completely hidden but actually this this doesn't cause much drag it does cause some drag but because of the way the craft accelerates through the lower atmosphere it doesn't cause much drag and on the other hand it is lighter than the other two versions and on balance it turned out that that was very critical you also note that the monopropellant there is not a full tank and that's because again of mass considerations and how I would pack the right amount of monopropellant for docking up at the station on this craft and all I could do is that tank behind the cockpit it was the best possible arrangement uh, these might be modified in a further version of the BGN but for now this was the basic idea that worked out now Jeb here is accelerating at around 20 kilometers. You can see he's actually going down here and gaining speed. In the end we're going to have a surplus of oxidizer because of the way it is flown and we're still trying to test the optimal trajectory for this particular plane. For now it's sufficient to get into orbit and get it back down safely. That is our goal. Eventually we'll proceed to higher altitude as we see here and as it loses thrust in jet mode it will be switched over to rocket mode. Typically automatic switching is not ideal and here Jeb actually accidentally pushed the button to shut down the engine before switching modes and turning it back on. Uh, still working out the kinks on the controls there I guess. But here it pitches up again but it'll, it'll flatten out quickly enough it's not necessary for it to pitch up very much in order to make orbit here. An optimal trajectory would minimize the amount of the burn at apoapsis that the BGN would do. And here you see as Jeb gets up to a hundred kilometers 
there isn't too much burning left to do at Apoapsis. Ultimately, the drag on the way up prevented Jeb from getting into a 100km orbit, but he did get into a nice stable orbit uh, with barely any liquid fuel left, but uh, also that surplus of oxidizer. There is the mod propellant reserve for, for the orbiting, though that's normally meant for station rendezvous. So, but this, this amount of liquid fuel is still enough to deorbit the BGN. And here we see Jeb lined up for the deorbit maneuver and using his rapier in order to bring his orbit down. Checking that very carefully to make sure the trajectory is all right. Now the BGN would much rather overshoot than undershoot because it has that large air brake on its tail. And with that large air brake, if it's overshooting, it can simply raise the air brake to slow down. If it's undershooting, of course, it has to use its jet, uh, jet engine mode on the rapier in order to position itself properly. And that's not optimal, especially since we have no more of that fuel left. As we start to see re-entry here, the BGN is a finely balanced craft. The center mass does tend to move forward as fuel is burned. However, it is not so far forward from the center of lift that the craft would tend to be nose heavy or anything like that. It does not flip out. It is very stable at both high and low velocities. Now, with this trajectory, Jeb is either going to have to use the air brakes fairly early or he is going to have to nose down rather sharply and we'll see what he does here. Uh, you can see the nose up attitude uh, is ideal for gaining lift at about 20 to 30 degrees it will give you more lift. However, you can create more drag by angling up even further than that, presenting a flat surface to the, to the atmosphere. That's more like what the space shuttle would do. And so 40 degrees up, you're actually getting more drag than lift. And of course you would want to do that in order to dispel the, the velocity and avoid overheating. The BGN, however, does not need to do that. It can fly many different kinds of trajectories in order to re-enter, and that makes it ideal for hitting whatever particular location you see fit. While Kerbals are expected to be trained properly for the ascent so that they don't use excessive fuel, there's wide tolerance for, for the way they bring the craft down so that uh, it, we wouldn't call it foolproof, but it is, it is not as dangerous. Uh, it does look like Jeb is late in raising the air brake here. And, well, we've sort of expected that because it is Jeb and he does like to take a steep descent into the KSC. Uh, he finds it much more exciting. And so we will see that happen and hope that he does not burn up in the process. The electrical systems on the BGN aren't particularly sophisticated there. There are no lights except for those on the landing gear. There isn't much battery power, there aren't fuel cells. And so there's a lot of room for development for a more complicated craft, but the goal was to design something simple and serviceable to fulfill the mission of getting Kerbals into space to the station and then back again. And here we see Jeb going for his uh, steep descent. You'll note that also no parachutes on the BGN, again because of mass issues. Here we have Jeb still at very high altitude, still with his air brake out, trying to descend rapidly, and it looks from the nap ball there that he's lost control. Uh, high g-forces here. Uh, Jeb, Jeb seems confident, and in fact he does have it back here. And again, that demonstrates the maneuverability and controllability of the BGN, though I don't think that anybody at Mission Control was eager to see that happen. Uh, Jeb, however, completely unfazed. Jeb has ignited his uh, jet engine, switched to jet mode, uh, but we don't think that with this trajectory he will need to actually run the engines with any throttle level, but he's got them on idle just in case. Still descending steeply. By all indications, Jeb is through any possibility of re-entry heating being an issue, and the craft certainly remained cool throughout all that. 
so uh, re-entry heat not a problem here we have Jeb descending below 4500 with landing gear down and a rather sudden pitch up there that caused high g-forces but Jeb is not concerned at all and returned directly to prograde we wonder what that was about but uh, he's he's still got it and there you see one of the drawbacks of the BG is its uh, tight wheelbase and perhaps in future versions that will be widened out a bit but right now uh, you, you have to be a little bit careful about how you land this thing lest you tip over one way or another Jeb continues to use the air brake liberally in order to slow down make sure that he's on a proper descent you can see still a steeper descent than normal and for some reason the way he pulls up generates a lot of buffeting and g-forces but uh, hopefully we can smooth those things out in future flights runways at 70 meters so below 400 meters below 300 meters below 200 meters 100 meters 50 right off the deck and and he's got it touchdown a bit of a hard touchdown for Jebediah Kerman on this test flight of the BGN but he's got it down successfully air brake is out slowing down to a stop we've got wheel stop and a successful flight of the BGN demonstrating its capability to reach orbit on its single rapier stage and return safely to the KSC. We thank you for watching this initial development from the Elegant Design Bureau and of course what we look forward to in the future is a station for this this particular craft to dock up with in fact uh, for many BGNs to dock up with a uh, workplace for our Kerbals and ways of refueling the craft in emergencies, uh, transfers to other planetary bodies, and much, much more. Thank you for watching this presentation from the Elegant Design Bureau. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and we'll see you next time.